Good morning, everyone. This is Linda. Today, in this clip, it is Wednesday morning. It's Wednesday morning. So I want to thank you all that stopped by the live last night. Yes, and in my area, I'm fine. Uh, but I do know that in other areas of New Orleans, like the Night Ward and Araby and St. Bernard Parish, yeah, they did have some damage. So I'm praying for those families. So as you can see, it's very windy out here. It's about mm, 58 degrees as I'm recording this right now. But our weather is going to be going up every day this week so i'm excited about that and of course because of all of this wind yes i will be doing a voiceover on this video these are my azaleas i inherited this plant when i moved into this property it's been about 22 years now and every year yep she'd look a little something like this She's absolutely amazed. But anyway, guys, I'm going to share what's going on here in my Zone 9 garden. Yay! So, as many of you know that I'm drinking coffee as I walk around, is that the spring brings out many, many more bugs than the fall does. So, I'm ready. I'm ready for them. And this is what I see on one of my vegetables. Now, I'm going to get in close so you can really take a look at her. So this is a green stink bug. That's what it is. <laughs> She's looking at me too. So, yeah, what these bugs does, they suck all the juices out of your plants. So this is just a little picture of the life, the life cycle of a stink bug. They turn colors, but don't be fooled, family. You know, from green to brown, yeah, they all suck all the life out of your plants. So, I'm ready. Now, I always like to use my oils as my last resort family. So, if you use, if you ever use neem oil, this is how I use these oils. So that is marigolds, and this is lemon, and I also use lime. I will share how I use these products in my garden, but as I say, I like to use them as a last resort. Yeah. So this is my pineapple sage plant, and she, of course, she went through the fall and my winter, Nope, I did not bring her inside. She stayed right out here in the garden. And she did good. She did really good. Um, I've eaten a lot of her leaves, made teas from her, uh, put her in salads. Oh yeah, I've been enjoying this plant. So now I've taken her away from where she was I'm cleaning her up really good. She has some yellowing leaves on her. She has some dead stems, so I'm taking them all off. Just cleaning her up, really, and making her nice and fresh. And of course, I gave her a little super juice in 511. <laughs> yes, I did. But it's... um. It's a beautiful plant and it's doing well. I did take some of the stems out also and just to propagate them. I have some in water and I do have some in soil. So whatever one take root, I'm happy about it. 
So I'll put her in different parts of the garden just to ward off many of the awakening bugs because I know they coming. They coming, family. <laughs> yeah, and um, I just want to be prepared and have lots and lots of herbs, garlics, leeks, um, shallots, just strong smelling uh, herbs. And I have more um, ginger uh, growing in different uh, parts of the garden just for the aroma. Um, this is my way of fighting uh, these insects. So we will see exactly what's going to happen with these bugs. Now, this is my first 100 gallon grow bag. Yes, thanks to my niece and nephew, Sharon and Chris, over there from Bagtow Roots Homestead, right? And so, this is the one that, yeah, I have more history with. I decided this spring what I wanted to do, I wanted to put not only more vegetables into this 100 gallon grow bag, but I wanted to put many varieties of vegetables in this grow bag. So I'm going to have a tomato, um, lots of brassicas, I'm going to have peppers, eggplants, yeah. I'm going to use this little 100 grow bag, uh, grow bag like it is the only planting area I have and I want to see just how much food I can get from this one grow bag but I also did something I put a trellis just a little TP trellis in this grow bag that is going to help with these tomatoes now I not only have the tomato that I'm planting right now in it I dropped some seeds of some chocolate cherry tomatoes and I think I put one uh, one vining tomato that chocolate cherry by each one of the poles there is three poles to this little teepee um, I'm also going to share with you that I dropped some peas around each pole of this little chalice and uh, those peas yes so each one of them I put three right and I also put some uh, sweet pea flowers and of course morning glories they are all around this little teepee and I can visualize it that it is going to be an amazing sight of beauty and food mm -hmm. so I uh, also I'm dropping some eggplants uh, and I think I have about three or four different varieties of eggplants that I'm dropping in this bed now last season I dropped two different varieties of eggplants I had some Casper white eggplants and I also had some purple stripe eggplants but this season I'm dropping I think uh, four three or four different varieties um, I'm gonna have some of those white night eggplants um, you'll see them <laughs> because I can't remember the name of them but um, they're purple one is purple one is white and one is like a green and yellow so it's going to be beautiful colors I'm looking for something um, that that's also beautiful in color and stunning but also very healthy and this is why I'm doing this yeah so it should be really cool <laughs> So I'm just dropping the seed using my finger as my ruler. Yes. So how I grow is that 
the very first joint of my finger is the deepest I will plant my seed. And this is how I was taught as a kid and family. It worked back then. It'll work today. <laughs> yes, it'll work today. So these are the eggplants, right? Yeah. So the white one, uh, I just purchased from the big box store. And of course, the other one is from Baker Creek. Yeah, so we're gonna we gonna drop those and we are gonna see what we get from them. But I'm looking forward to them. Now in the cups you see back there, it is just some brassicas. I did drop more brassicas. I dropped a couple of tatsoys. Um, some curly mustard greens is in here. Um, I do have some uh, red mustard greens. I dropped them direct sown them in this little bed so yeah I'm excited this is my 100 gallon grow bag on Wednesday morning after all of the rain and yeah this is the way she looked and she just withstood. So she did great. The little TP that I put in there, there she goes. She's standing tall, family. <laughs> yes, she stayed. So I did not finish putting everything out of the cups, but that's okay. They're doing good right where they sit at. So I'm excited. The day is such a beautiful day. And now I'm really about to get into it, right? yeah <laughs> but i wanted to give you all also an update on my five fruit trees of course my roses she's right there she's right there in the mix right <laughs> so i wanted to share some of the um the fruit trees so these are my blueberries and look at that yay she put me on flowers yep they're looking really really good and uh, I'm excited to see her uh, look like this so these are my five fig trees that's Fiona that's uh, the purple I think yeah and the last one I don't know if I go back there but anyway <laughs> it's the gold so the LSU purple and gold they're fine Fiona and both of the brown turkey fig trees they are all they have all of their leaves and they are truly putting on a show this morning yes they're looking really good just gorgeous gorgeous and uh, I'm excited just to have them nice and full again and uh, yep the air laid look good too yeah, I'm looking forward to peeping in there real soon. But nope, I'm not peeping yet. <laughs> I'm not going to do it. <laughs> but I'm more than sure it's going to be okay. But anyway, that's all the fig trees over there. And they look really good. Yeah. So I also did a harvest. Just a little. This was just for lunch. It's a lunch harvest. Yeah. And this is a beet. And I, yeah, I'm going to pull her up. But she's in this container with a huge Swiss shard. This Swiss shard, I dropped this seed back in, at the beginning of fall. And she is just amazing. I've been eating on her like crazy. Of course, with all the onions in the beds with them. She have lots of onions, garlics, and leeks with her also. And nope, she have no bug damage. None. None, I tell you. Yeah, so it's, listen, it's always a blessing when you can look down in your plants and don't see aphids or anything moving, right? Yeah, but anyway, there she is. It was so good. It was so good. <laughs> yes, family. And... I have so many, just um, these Chinese red, uh, Japanese red, whatever one of them, 
but uh the celery they they just popping up all over the garden just all over the garden so what i've been doing is taking some of them and just placing them in containers there's another one just popped up in the cell yeah but you know i'm not mad at them no that is an elderberry now how did she get over there i don't have a clue y'all but it's an elderberry speaking of elderberries there is my largest elderberry tree and as you can see she's a big girl and yes she had flowers <laughs> she had flowers just i wanted to share that on some of my uh fig trees sometimes when you see your figs the leaves just coming on the tree it looks like a fig but family it's not a fig uh, figs you know no it's the leaves when they first come on your tree they look they look like a ball and you may think it's a fig but it's not the next day you go out there and look at that same spot and what you will see is a leaf and it grows it starts off by looking like this beautiful ball now that's my lime uh, tree now it's bizarre but one one half of this um, lime tree one stem to the other side it died but this side of uh, the other side of the lime tree she still looked beautiful I just can't get over these blueberries